Hi friends, welcome to the Wild Side. I'm Steve Hall. Sometimes good intentions can have disastrous results. It must have seemed like a good idea back in the 70s for people who wanted to control algae blooms in farm ponds and improve wastewater treatment by using a foreign fish. The plan backfired and work is continuing to try and stop the havoc that was unleashed. One philosophy that surfaced is if we can't beat them, let's eat them. There's a peaceful, easy feeling at Pickwick Lake for watching wildlife, cooling off with a swim, or throwing in a line from the dock. But such recreational tranquility is threatened by a foreign body that now swims beneath the surface and can suddenly jump 10 feet into the air. The Asian carp, rapidly reproducing and threatening the habitat of other species. This invasive fish is impacting river systems and communities throughout the southeast and the Midwest, up through Minnesota and South Dakota. They're not supposed to be here, of course, and we've been working at our our eradication program since 2018. I think we're doing all that we can currently to, to work within the framework of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services Management and Control Plan as far as the removal part of the process. The carp is a threat to our ecosystem. Everyone that lives in Henry County and Stewart County and the counties that surround Henry County are very passionate about our lake and saving our lakes, as my husband Clay and I are as well. At the end of the day, literally and figuratively, Crystal Young's husband, Clay, is leading a mission to participate in the Asian carp removal. It's a family business, so his son-in-law is with him, heading out on Pickwick Lake. Tonight, we are going to bring our large carp boat down, and we're going to make a strike set in Dry Creek to see if we can catch a load of the Asian carp. Until recently, that's the one fish Clay definitely did not want landing in his nets. His biggest success has been from catching more profitable species, primarily paddlefish for caviar. The carp were essentially worthless to his business. I used to fish on the Mississippi River a lot. You know, you would, you would go out to catch buffalo and you would put your nets out and you'd catch a thousand or fifteen hundred pound of buffalo and five thousand pounds of carp. Well, that's that's a lot of work for nothing. You know, you were killing them, throwing them back in the water and everything like that. And while Clay was emptying his nets of the nuisance, his wife and co-owner of North American Caviar was back at the office with their daughter counting the cost. Gas and maintenance on their vehicles and boats and everything that it takes to go out and harvest this species. They damage your nets um, almost every time you go out there. So you're constantly having to replace your nets and make repairs. Commercial fishing is a big part of our life. It's our livelihood and we employ a lot of commercial fishermen and everything. And the carp, you know, they've put a challenge on the last 10 years of fishing, especially on the Mississippi River where I grew up and I began my commercial fishing career. Yeah. Something had to change and it would require the fishing industry and government to work together. We were able to work on helping TWA come up with uh, solutions for the invasive species and um, looked at our client base to see if we had some interest there. We implemented the T-CHIP program, the Tennessee Carp Harvest Incentive Program. It's implemented through our wholesale fish dealers. So the commercial fishermen, they pay those fishermen a minimum amount, and we reimburse the wholesale fish dealers a certain amount to recoup some of that cost to hopefully that they will be able to build a market for that and in time be able to wean themselves off the, the program, the incentive programs. Now with our program and, you know, creating a market for them, it's, it's another species we can harvest. So this fishing expedition is not only to help get rid of an invasive species, but also to now provide a profit for every pound of Asian carp that is caught. My son-in-law came down and he did a kind of a sample one night and he hit about 3,500 pounds and then we came back three nights later and we had 17,000, I think 600 pounds that night. It was a lot of fish, a lot of fish. The easiest and fastest way to sell these bony carp currently is for lobster bait and pet food with the largest volume going to processors that dry and grind up the entire fish. 
So the bone meal plant, um, they make fertilizer and bone meal, and uh, they also retrieve the fish oil from the fish. So there's a lot of different um, products that they can make with it, and that seems to be the most successful um, avenue for the invasive carp because of the bone structure. It's made it a success for the commercial fishermen to make a living at it. But part of the goal is to grow the market by making the carp more desirable for people to eat. One marketing campaign says, if you can't beat them, eat them. It's a great tasting fish. It's just getting past that name of carp. In some cases, the industry has started marketing the fish under the name Kopi. You've got the orange roughy. It was called the orange slime fish for 30 something years. And you know, it became the orange roughy and now it's one of the sought after saltwater fish. For the North America Caviar Company, changing the perception begins at home in Paris, Tennessee with sales of Asian fish fillets. We do supply uh, the invasive species to our local community um, through the grocery stores, the local stores here and, and restaurants and so forth. You know, it's a pretty big seller. It definitely draws the attention of some people. And they say it's really good. Uh, it's bringing in some business for us. The North American Caviar has done a great job with, with selling that in the grocery stores and getting that kind of mainstream to show people that it is a, 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 a good food source. It's a great product, and they've done a great job marketing that product here in the state of Tennessee, and, and I think that you know, greater things are to come. In another aggressive sales and marketing effort, North American Caviar has been selling the fish to companies in Texas and California, and to a food truck company that serves fish tacos. Several commercial fishing and wholesale companies have joined in the effort to reduce the number of Asian carp and they are making a difference. We have seven million pounds harvested annually, so that's, that's a big number for us, and, and if we can maintain that and move, move higher in the invasive carp harvest, that would be great. No one expects the Asian carp to be completely removed, but TWRA is working with other agencies to try and stop the invasive carp from traveling into other waterways. We hope to make sure that they don't go upstream. We have our deterrent systems that the Fish and Wildlife Service is, is partnered with the TVA and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the BAF system, the bioacoustic uh, fence system that they put in at the locks and dams. It's sound, uh, it's light, it's noise, it's underwater, and controls those fish from moving upstream through the locks. So for now, the carp has finally become a fish worth catching and selling, and it's a fish that can be harvested year-round. All of our fishermen still fish for paddlefish. We have a season. Uh, it begins sometime in November and ends in April. The guys still will cart fish at night. You can fish your paddlefish nets and stuff during the day, go out right at dark, put the, put the nets out. It's a 30 minute set, pick your fish out, and you know, it's not keeping you out there all night. Reducing the population is still a priority. It is our lives. We love this community and we love this lake and I grew up here. You know, I want my children to grow up here as well and be able to enjoy the lake and it not be overrun with the invasive species. It takes a special device to remove the bones of Asian carp and North American caviar has it, thanks to a TWRA grant. It seems that these fillets, similar in size to chicken tenders, are the best way to please very particular human palates. Our website, wildsidetv.com, offers more information on Asian carp and the growing market for it. Tennessee's Wild Side has been a presentation of the Jackson Foundation in association with Rockwater TV.